This video is sponsored by Thrive Market. This is so aggressive. Hi, guys. How are you? Gosh, it seems like it's been a minute, huh? If you guys don't know, I've been posting over on my second channel. I know, I finally did it. My second channel, Daddy Hannah. I'm posting romance book reviews. I also made a life advice Q&A video. I have a lot of different ideas of things I wanna do, and I'm having a really good time. So if you want more of me, go follow me over there. I also have big plans for the Vocal Collective's YouTube channel. If you want more vocal analysis, real practice, and technique for singers, you can follow me over there. How the heck are you? I'm doing really great. My cats, they have a little perch on the window. Aren't they so cute? But they're asleep right now, thank God. <laughs> Today, we're doing a highly requested video. I'm watching The Greatest Showman. Now, I have seen this movie before, but it has been a very long time. This is very specific. Visualize this, okay? I'm on a cruise. I am incredibly pregnant. And I was not one of the pregnant people that like, you know, you turn to the side and then you're like, oh my God, you're pregnant everywhere. Sweaty, acne, huge belly, very uncomfortable. And I was on a cruise. The ship had landed and my swollen feet would not. I, I could not go out into wherever we were in the Caribbean and explore. So I was just like, I'm not going. And my husband at the time was like, well, I want to go. And so he did. And I stayed and ate French fries on the deck while watching The Greatest Showman on the big screen. And that is my memory of this movie. I don't really remember anything about the movie, but I do remember that small <laughs> moment of reprieve as a very large pregnant woman eating my French fries with my feet up watching this movie. Before we get into the video, a word from today's sponsor. Hi, Hannah on a different day here to tell you that this video is sponsored by Thrive Market. Thrive Market is an online membership-based grocery store on a mission to make healthy eating easy and affordable for everyone with guaranteed savings on every order. Let me tell you all the things I love about Thrive Market. First, you're gonna save money, guaranteed. As a Thrive Market member, you'll save on every single order. And if you find a lower price elsewhere, Thrive will match it. Also, you will make back your $60 membership back in savings. And if you don't, Thrive will credit you the difference. And all orders over $49 ship free. That's you with Thrive Market. This aspect of Thrive Market is what I'm really excited about. Customized grocery shopping. You can easily filter the catalog of products by diet and lifestyle, product types, and your favorite brands. Gluten-free, vegan, keto, Thrive Market is a store customized to your needs. Oh God, we're having a Titanic moment in the back. <gasps> Are you okay? I am a gluten-free and dairy-free girly, which means I read a lot of labels. And I love that on Thrive Market, I can filter all the products that are certified gluten and dairy-free. Makes shopping so much easier. Another thing I love about Thrive Market, I can make my orders from the comfort of my own home, where I am 98% of the time. You can even create auto ship orders for the things you use the most. Yes, please. This is also great if you live far from a health food store or driving the 15 minutes is just too much. You don't wanna do it today. Thrive Market's got you. Also, Thrive Market has carbon neutral free shipping and waste-free warehouses. Thrive Market is really out here doing the most to become the world's first climate positive grocery store. Click the link in the description or go to thrivemarket.com slash Hannah Bales to get 30% off your first order and a free gift worth up to $60 when you join Thrive Market today. Whoa! Okay, maybe I do remember more about this movie than I thought. Ooh, ooh, we're building an energy. Ladies and gents, this is the moment you've waited for. <laughs> okay, I'm excited. Don't fight it, it's coming for you, running at you. It's with this moment, don't okay, care what comes out of Very mumbly, Hugh Jackman. I cannot understand a thing that you're saying. It's fire, it's freedom, it's flooding open. Look at those horsies. Look at him keep the beat. It reminds me of this dance that I'm pretty sure that I made up when I was in high school called the Prairie Dog. It's just like this. Yeah. Look, look, I was a Mormon teenager. I could only go to Mormon dances. That's all I could do when I was there. So that was my move. Zendaya, oh, baby, you look so good. Look at your pink hair. And she sounds amazing, but this is so funny. Look at this. This, <laughs> this is so so clearly not a person. That is not a real person. I don't even think that's a body double. That has got to be a mannequin. That's so funny the way she's standing. <laughs> you know, Hugh Jackman does look good in a top hat. I don't think everybody can say that. 
Jared, he come here. Children laughing, not in my home. I made her laugh. I'm an aspiring comedian. Ah, <gasps> oh, I be throwing hands. Sir, that is not your child. You shouldn't hit any children, whether they're yours or not yours. Don't do that. That's terrible. Oh, poor baby. Sing about it. I close my eyes and I can see the world that's waiting up for me. He's got such a cute voice. Freaking catchy song. That lantern, doesn't that look like one of those plug-in air freshener covers from Bath and Body Works? Like he's just about to plug that in an outlet. Anyway, Pasek and Paul, who wrote the music in this movie, let me tell you something. They can write catchy tunes. They really can. This is catchy. A long time ago, I worked on this song with a couple students, so I know the music, but I think I could sing like most of the words. Like they just get in your brain. They burrow in there and you're never gonna forget them. This young man is so talented. He's a hungry boy. Can you imagine? This happens in Aladdin too. Literally stealing food because you need it to survive. And you know that and you're going to pry that bread out of his hungry, frail fingers. No. The problem is I'm too generous to like ever have like a shop like that. I would see a child didn't even steal anything. And I'd be like, honey, do you need a treat? Are you hungry? Here you go. And I just give them whatever they want. I'm too soft. She's got a really good voice too. Make your fortune. See the open plains of America. <laughs> so I... Right behind him. I just thought that said milkers. <laughs> Moving on. Hello, sir. I'm the little boy you slapped that one time. Is this like period appropriate hair? She's got the freaking front bump it. I did that when I was like in junior high. It's actually still way too cute. <laughs> that, you know, it was like that. I did that when I was a cheerleader in junior high. Ooh, they sound good together. Oh my gosh. She just like tried to jump off the roof, reached her hand out like longingly, like the sweet relief of death. Hugh Jackman is so talented. He sounds great. They sound great together, but that high note was great. Wow, they're pregnant. Man, this song, I mean, this was a long song, but they spanned a lot of time. Yes, yes, it's a little heavy handed. That was a little heavy handed, like looking out the window and seeing the other job, people working at their desks and then seeing a cemetery. All right, that's not what we mean when we say show don't tell. Damn, okay, we get it. He's feeling his mortality at this moment. He doesn't want to be a corporate slave to the man forever. What are you looking at, flop doodle? <laughs> Seriously, it's not nice to stare. It's a good bet is what it is, sir. People don't want to admit it, but they're fascinated with the exotic and the macabre. It's why we stare at it. Oh, <gasps> oof. <laughs> Staring at a little person and then saying, people are fascinated with the exotic and the macabre. Oof. Oof. <laughs> a place to be transported. A place where people can see things they've never seen before. This is a wee bit strange. We've learned, like, the desperation that he has to, like, provide for his family. They're poor. He just got laid off. Okay, I understand that. I have no background on why he wants to start, like, a Ripley's Believe It or Not museum. <laughs> There's nothing except that little person he was very rudely staring at. You need something alive. Something sensational. Little girl says, you should have something alive and sensational in your museum. And he thinks, oh, humans. I am putting together a show and I need a star. The audacity of this man to come to his house, invite him to be a part of his freak show. People will come from all over the world and when they see him, they won't laugh. 
This is emotional manipulation. Charles, say no. You are so talented, blessed. <laughs> He's so creepy. He's looking at these people like they are not human. Sometimes I wish that I could just enjoy things, but I don't have to notice the things that are problematic or anything. I could just enjoy things for being things. No, I'm cursed. <laughs> and I find this movie incredibly dark. He's got a great voice. Oh, ew, I'm mad. This is giving me goosebumps. I didn't want to like this song, but I do. <laughs> this is a fun dance sequence. Really, Barnum has just had dreams of Broadway since he was a little boy. Oh, we love an acapella clap moment. Okay, I like that. That was my favorite part in the movie so far. Ew, something does smell. Peanuts. <laughs> oh my God. I swear, if I found out that my daughter was being a mean girl, I would lose my mind. Actually, if I saw a child being the mean girl to my daughter, I would lose my mind. Hey, being the mean girl is not cool. It's not cute. It's actually really lame. You look ridiculous. And then I would grab my daughter and we would walk away. Like that. Actually, this would be the perfect place for the That's what I would do. Rise above? No. Stoop below, okay? Stoop to their level. You believe your show's a great deal happier than when they came in, which is much more than I could say for my play. Zac Efron is such a hunk. Have to mention that. But you also know how some people just make sense in like period pieces, you know? You're like, yeah, you fit there. You fit in that time period. Hugh Jackman, he fits. I don't feel like Zac Efron fits. And I don't think it's just because I know him from High School Musical. I don't know. Is his face, his haircut? No, I don't know. He just doesn't fit. I put the offer out. I don't want to chase you down. I know you see it. You run with me and I can catch you free. <laughs> I really like how he's like acting out every word. He's like, you run me. I'll cut you free. Because I got what you need to come with me and take the ride. It'll take you to the other side. This is hilarious. He gets on the table and Zac Efron's like, what are you about to do? <laughs> Please don't take your clothes off. <laughs> he just looks scared. Don't. Like, is this really how you want to spend your days? Whiskey, parties, plays? Um, yes. Money, parties. Yeah, yeah, I do. I'm very comfortable here. Thank you. Okay, the bartender is doing the most. Look at him. I don't know who he is, but he deserves all the props. Love at first sight. That's how everybody is when they first see Zendaya. Auga. <laughs> Am I right, Zach? I know, I know, I get it. I don't have an act. Everyone's got an act. Look at him. He's like, step on me, please. <laughs> Nothing draws a crowd quite like a crowd. Did this really happen? I mean, I know that this is like vaguely, vaguely inspired by P.T. Barnum. Did that really happen? Like, what's the, what's the deal? He's got a couple of elephants and he's got a, a bearded lady. Would there really be that much outrage? Maybe that's why they became a traveling circus. I don't know. He's a prig. And a snob. Yeah, and all the snobs in New York read him. He does their thinking for them. Whatever happened to thriving off controversy? Yeah, rich people in this time period, they love scandal. I mean, they still do. Have we not seen Bridgerton, which is clearly completely historically accurate? They love scandal. They love gossip. Like, what else are they going to do with their lives and all their money? Like, they're going to gossip. Of course they would love this. Like, they'll talk bad about it and be like, oh my gosh, how lowbrow. I would never. And then, of course, they're going to go. They're going to sneak in and be like, oh my God, I had to go see it. I didn't like it and then talk about it. They should thrive off the controversy. They should. If you agree, I'll make you the most famous singer, not in Europe, but in the entire world. And have you heard me sing? Absolutely. No, I haven't. He doesn't even know if she can sing. Why me? 
People come to my show for the pleasure of being hoodwinked. Just once, I'd love to give them something real. Flirting. That's flirting. Miss Jenny Lynn. And now presenting a woman I don't know if she can sing or not. This actress isn't actually singing, which I think is a real bummer. Everybody else in this movie sings. Like, why did they not cast an actual singer for this part? You set off a dream in me. She even looked at him when she said, you set off a dream in me. Flirting, both ways. Will you share this with me? Oh my God, Star they're about to touch palms. <gasps> Pinkies! All the stars we steal from the night sky will never be enough. This is a really beautiful song. Never be enough. Why she's not singing opera is very strange. Or at least, why did they have to say that she was an opera singer? They didn't have to throw that in. If they knew she was going to be singing a whole ass pop song, they could have just said she was a singer. Guys, who's going to pay admission if you're out there for all the world to see? Okay, have a great show. Wait. Rude. I am not a stranger to the dark. Hide away, they say, because we don't want your broken parts. They got some really jarring beginnings of songs in this movie. She's rejected. They're feeling bad about it. And then all of a sudden she's like, I'm no stranger. And she's about to sing the freaking This Is Me song, right? Like, can we get like more than three seconds of emotional development before we sing a song? <laughs> I just wish that they had turned around and like walked into the party singing this song. Like, this is me. And like started shaking people's hands. Not like leave. They sound amazing though. This is a good song. Oh my God. I love that. When the sharpest words want to cut me down. I'm gonna so... send a bird, gonna drown a man. I wish that they had given her a better looking beard. Doesn't look very real. I want a realistic beard on my bearded lady. Have you no shame? Associating yourself with that Barnum business is one thing, but parading around with the help. Ooh, that's awful. You claim it's not in the cards. Fate is pulling your miles away and out of reach. God, all of these songs sound the same. But you're my destiny. Coming up on a catchy chorus. What if we rewrite the stars? Say you were made to Ooh. be mine. Ooh, Zach Efron sounds amazing. It's up to you and it's up to me. No She's one trying to get away from you, sir. Sorry, this is supposed to be romantic. <sighs> It's the curse. I'm gonna turn off my brain and enjoy it. Oh my God. <laughs> she zoomed out of there so fast. Oh my God. I'm pretty sure that was supposed to be cute, but she just slammed into him. That would have hurt so bad. That's very pretty. Do you think Zendaya watched High School Musical when she was a kid and like crushed on Troy Bolton, just like all of us, and then booked this part and was like, oh my God, I get to kiss Zac Efron. Because that is what I would do. I know that she was a Disney Channel kid. That's a very pretty song. I liked it. Is my chair squeaking? The chair that I got specifically so that it would not squeak. If you guys have any recommendations on chairs that aren't going to squeak and that I can sit in without fidgeting in, let me know in the comments. When will it ever be enough for you? I'm doing this for Caroline and Helen. Marital problems that we saw coming. So I risk it all just to be with Stop you. looking at her like that. You have a wife and two children. And my heart and you to Ooh. She sounds amazing. I kind of forgot this song existed. Well, now I'm getting mad. The way he's looking at Jenny Lind is bothering me. <laughs> so making dreams come true. Is she wearing a robe? Why are you guys that close? Stop. 
I should go. I, um, uh, I've become a distraction. I'm sorry, Jenny. No, no. You should finish it all without me. What? You're leaving? Oh, God, he's so impulsive. I'm done. Jenny. Jenny, please. Okay, okay, okay. Other than Jenny Lind knowing that he's married and has children. Okay, she knows that. Bad. Bad Jenny Lind. Other than that, I totally get why she thought that he was into her. I totally get it. He was making googly eyes at her. Her beautiful singing voice was bringing him to tears. And they've been spending all this time together and cuddling while they're asleep. She's in her freaking robe and like little negligee thing. Jenny, I get you. Okay? I get you. You shouldn't have pursued a married man, but also like, I get it. He's a piece of trash. Never be enough. Oh my God, she literally has her heart broken. These hands could hold the world, but it'll never be enough. Girl, you can't sing those high notes while you're crying. That's impossible. Thank you. Who was that? <clears throat> that was a good night. So I remember when I watched this movie, like Jenny Lind is supposed to be a bit of a villain. Is she not? We're supposed to like not like her? I thought that move was calculated, but that didn't seem as calculated as I thought it initially was. She seems genuinely heartbroken. Oh my God, I'm a Jenny Lind sympathizer. Oh, great. Does a fire spread that quickly? My God. I mean, I know that was an oil lamp, but jeez. Just in time, your theater's on fire. My goodness. That is quite the fire. Oh my God, he had to go in and carry Zac Efron out. That's so romantic. Now give him mouth to mouth. Because she orchestrated the photo, I'm not in love with her. Of course you're not. Not with her, not with me, not with anyone, just you and your show. She's not wrong. Here comes one of his performers that he doesn't treat like humans to remind him of the real meaning of life. The other humans in his life. Not these people, because they're not his equals, but the other people that he cares about. I remember who all this was for. And from A banjo? Oh, I fucking love banjos. I'm not joking, I really love it. They really only let him be sad for, God, two, three minutes in this movie. And then there's another motivational musical number. Damn. That's very impressive. Sir, you're going to have to do some groveling. Yay, they're in love and he's alive. Woo. This is the best love story of the whole movie. And they've hardly had any scream time. Charity is way too good for Mr. Barnum. Oh, she's wearing a scarf and looking thoughtfully out into the ocean. Jump scare, it's your cheating husband. I can anthem in my heart. However they just like that? You're gonna forgive him? I'd be like, lick the bottom of my shoe first. Show me that you're really sorry. <laughs> Do it. Don't we love a conflict that doesn't really have high stakes because we know it's gonna get resolved in two minutes? I love that. Simple storylines, I love it. You brought joy into my life. Into all our lives. Here, yeah, here. Yeah. Okay, all right, this makes sense now. P.T. Barnum has started a cult. That's the only answer for how they are so freaking loyal to him. They like him so much. What has he done for them except treat them less than human? He's their cult leader. Oh my gosh. How big is that tent? This is so aggressive. <laughs> Take those animals back to the wild. They shouldn't be performing for you. You're not paying them. Oh my God, she's amazing. I like that better. I like Zac Efron in this movie.
he rode an elephant to the ballet. Number one, totally impractical. Number two, animal cruelty. Number three, why do you have to make everything about you? Oh, that's a very cute shot with the light behind them. I like that. Oh, she's the soloist. Oh my God, there's a tree. <laughs> oh man, they made her be the tree. Nobody else is a tree. It's everything you ever want. It's everything you ever need. Okay, you can stop doing reprises now. It's okay. You don't have to sing. I hope you worship your wife for taking you back. Worship her. The noblest art is that of making others happy. Others as in other humans, not the people in his shows, because those aren't human. Certainly not the animals in his shows, because those aren't human either. Wow, I'm so sassy. Okay, what was my favorite song? I don't know, because I can't remember any of them. I really like Never Enough. I really like that song, but it's not my favorite out of the whole movie, because it's just a little boring. Like, she, she just stands there and sings the whole song. And she's lip syncing, so. I really liked Rewrite the Stars. Rewrite the Stars. The one that Zac Efron and Zendaya sang, that was pretty cute. But I thought that I would be able to turn off my brain and not think about how problematic things are or like notice those things. And it got worse as the movie went on. I think that Hugh Jackman's very charming. He's very charming. He was good for this role. But even at the end, I was like, mm -mm. no, no. Even your charm at this point is not working on me. I did not like him. Is he redeemable? This P.T. Barnum? I don't know about real P.T. Barnum. Is he redeemable? Yes. But I don't feel like he earned his happy ending. He didn't earn it. I wanted to see him like grovel and beg. <laughs> <laughs> his wife's forgiveness. Uh, probably says a little too much about me. Thanks again to Thrive Market for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description box or go to thrivemarket.com slash Hannah Bales to get 30% off your first order and a free gift worth up to $60 when you join Thrive Market today. Any hooser, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps me out in the algorithm. It really does. And I really want to get to a million subscribers by the end of the year and get my fancy gold plaque. I'm going to put it right there, right next to my fancy silver plaque. So help me get to that milestone. Maybe if you like what you see here, support me on Patreon if you want to see longer versions of videos just like this one. On Patreon, it might be an hour long. Oh my God, you can't get enough of me. Um, follow me on Instagram, TikTok if you want to, at hannah.bales. And don't forget to subscribe to my second channel if you want like book reviews and other random things that I feel like talking about. Subscribe to the Vocal Collective's YouTube channel. There's a lot of exciting things coming. There are no videos yet, but they are coming. So subscribe now to be the first to know. Okay, bye. I love you.